Okay, uh, this morning we want to interview Wayne Stump. Wayne was a B-17 pilot during World War II, flew 29 combat missions. Uh, so we'll talk to him this morning. Nice to have you here, Wayne. Nice to be here, Dave. Okay. Tell me, uh, when and where were you born? Moscow, Idaho, uh, 43023. That's April. April thirtieth. Uh, April thirtieth. Thirtieth. Twenty nineteen twenty three. Twenty three. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so my Moscow, as I recall, is right across the border from uh, uh, Washington State University, yeah. Pullman. Yeah. And I've heard that uh, the fraternity boys from Pullman would cross the border and get. Uh, oh yes, you know, it was annual. A little, a little, uh, <laughs> Adult you know. beverages at uh, <laughs> indecent prices. Uh, uh -huh. you guys. Uh -huh. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, um, that was very common. I was. Uh, uh, I, I think I was fortunate of being close enough to uh, Idaho and Washington State, and also uh, going through uh, most of my uh, schooling at Eugene to be in college. Uh, around college towns or in oh, college uh, towns, <laughs> it was it was very uh, Eugene especially was a very uh, great place. I could think of any place in the world that you could ask for uh, the surroundings uh, and the atmosphere of uh, a college town when there was like thirty five thousand people in the town of Eugene and. Uh, uh, a beautiful mill race running through the campus and uh, my school, high school, being in the middle of the campus uh, called University High. And so all the, all the activities and we had, uh, saw so all the sport, we knew how to get into air, and, uh, <laughs> basketball, football, what have you. So it was the University of Oregon. Right? Yeah. And then, they uh, had some pretty good uh, basketball teams, didn't they? They won, well, they, the, they won the uh, the first uh, uh, national title in 1939. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the right. The Oregon that's right. Furs. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, been a, as active in sports and uh, in football. Uh, one of the assistants to uh, my coach was. Uh, uh, Norm, Norman Van Rocklin. Oh, really? <laughs> so I got not only got to see him play football in college, but also uh, he helped, he was student. They, they had student teachers, uh -huh. and he helped out. So it was university so it was very, you went to. Yeah, it was a, a great place. Yeah. What uh, position did you play? Oh. We used the old uh, Notre Dame uh, box, uh, shift the whole backfield, and I was the left half. Oh. And uh, I was one of those uh, people. That, uh, it was a, a triple fret man because I did most of the passing and the putting and the try for extra points. Uh -huh. And uh, I never was very good at that try for extra points, but we played in the mud a lot. <laughs> Did you drop kick it or place kick it? No, uh, I place kicked it, but uh, yeah. uh, something about uh, uh, that football weighed about, seemed like it weighed about twice as much as uh, uh, it should have. And they didn't change balls on every play like they did. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't have the, the, the fancy helmets in those days. Uh. Little bit, but little, I little leather, didn't get hit in the head too much, so I guess it was all right. But they were very enjoyable, even under the uh, rain and the mud that we played in. When we, did you When did you move to Eugene from Moscow? Uh, in uh, 1930. Or how old were you? 1937. Oh. I just graduated from I just graduated from uh, the eighth grade in Plus. And uh, and I had uh, got gra 
graduate two years in a row, and then I got to graduate from junior high. <laughs> didn't get to go to the high school. So. <laughs> it was. Uh, I thought this was great. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, okay. Well, tell me, what did your dad do? Um, my uh, father and mother. My father left my mother when uh, I was. Uh, a little over a year old, so I never knew him very well. Uh, my brother uh, raised four boys and a girl through the Depression, and uh, what was that like for y'all? Depression. Uh, Small farming town, uh, probably not more than two or three people. Was this still Moscow? Or no, this was a Palouse. When did you leave Moscow? Or? Uh, well, I was born there, but we, uh, we moved to Palouse. And uh, nobody had anything. Uh, you had to really dig to get enough money to go to the the uh, Saturday movie or the serials, uh, uh, and I think they were ten cents. And uh, to get ten cents, uh, we would. Uh, one of the things we did was we'd go out where they were thrashing, and. Uh, They'd spill some grain, and we uh, a piece of screen, and we would sift the grain out until we got a little bit of a bag of that, and take it to the feed store, and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I worked. Uh, as I got older, I worked in a in a general store at, at ten cents uh, an hour to get enough money for a Boy Scout uniform, and. Our, uh, we didn't have a newspaper, so all of our information came from the movie told news on the, uh, at the theater, and uh, I think that's where I got the the itch to fly was seeing uh, things about Lindbergh and and uh, Wiley Post and Roscoe Turner and all the. Uh, all the pioneer uh, deal, and then uh, at one time the uh, fella came in with a Ford trimotor and landed in a wheat field next to town, and uh, he was taking people for rides, and I, I don't remember how much he was charging, but I didn't have uh, two nickels to rub together. But, I was out there all the time, and finally, I guess he felt sorry for me. He, he says, "Get in. You don't look like you weigh very much." And uh, I was about uh, oh, I don't know, ten, nine or ten, something like that. And uh, and I read everything I could find uh, for years on uh, flying and. Uh, I found a used bookstore in uh, Eugene, and it had all kinds of one one I don't remember the name of the publication, but it had all kinds of pictures and plates. And I had gotten the habit of cutting out the pictures and and sticking them on the wall with uh, pins. My mother was a seamstress and uh, had lots of straight pins, so I decorated our room. She shared with an older brother, and he didn't think much of it. But I had a pretty well wall to wall with airplanes. So your mom, she was—is that how she raised you guys by being mm -hmm. a seamstress? And then that we all worked. Uh, I was uh, I was to help deliver milk when I was probably nine years old, eight or nine years old. My older brother, next oldest brother, and I had a, a little, there was a little uh, local dairy. Uh, and uh, that's back when everything was in glass, uh, yeah. uh, glass bottles. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. We 
would uh, deliver milk. And what, but was it a happy time for you? Uh, most of the time it was because uh, all the kids that you played with, they didn't have anything more than you did. You uh, you had you raised big gardens and you uh, they raised uh, some of the people around there had fields that they raised uh, potatoes in and after they harvested the potatoes you could go in and uh, get the ones they missed and uh, we'd, you, we'd usually get two or three gunny sacks of potatoes. Uh, it's I, just uh, you made your own. You made right. your own uh, fun. You didn't have anything in the way of uh, uh, entertainment except that movie. And uh, I did discover the library, and I was quite young, and uh, I liked western stories. So before I was uh, probably uh, twelve years old, I probably read every book that uh, Zane Grey wrote, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and. Uh, that helped. One of my mother's uh, constant remarks was, Wayne, you're going to ruin your eyes. Uh, if I, we had uh, coal oil lamps and not electric lights in some of, some of the houses we lived in. And, and uh, I didn't always have the, the best light, so she was always telling me that. <laughs> I. Uh when I talked to, I think your friend, the neighbor, Russ Snow, Russ? he grew up in Indiana, similar situation like uh -huh. you, and he said it was just, you didn't know any better. You thought that was supposed to be that way. Yeah. Everybody was poor or, or whatever. And uh, yeah. Yeah. When you were little, why you had a, a stick uh, for a horse and you played uh, stick horse when you got, when you got older, uh, if you had uh, a bicycle, uh, if you we had a bicycle that uh, my cousin who lived in Moscow gave us. My oldest, uh, next to the oldest brother, went over and and uh, was going to ride it home, but he pushed it most of the way from Moscow over, and I don't know, it was, I don't know how just how far, 15 miles or something like that. But he pushed it over, and uh, I was to, I was so small that when I rode it, I could only catch the pedals when they came over the top, and, and the only way I could stop was to fall off. <laughs> they used to, brothers used to get mad at me because I was banging up the bicycle. But, uh, oh, um, that same brother uh, ran a little trap line in the winter, and there, there's a Palouse River run through it there, and I used to get up in the early, uh, dark and to go out with him on his trap line and with our dog and, and uh, that was uh, what that to was trap what would you guys be trapping? A uh, muskrat most of the time. Once in a while you get lucky and get a mink but mostly muskrat. And uh, So you sell it, eat the muskrat or sell it or what? Oh no, you, you sold the fur. <laughs> you skinned them and, <laughs> and you sold the fur. And uh, oh, in those years, those years, uh, we had a trestle that ran across a train trestle, and uh, uh, that was probably the riskiest uh, <laughs> part of our lives. We used to climb Just, around on those. Did you see that movie uh, about these kids? And it was it was taking place in Oregon, and part of it is they're going across this railroad trestle oh, and yeah. the trains coming oh, in. Yeah. It must have I been never, similar to that. Yeah. Well, there weren't very many trains. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the things that we did, we always had slingshots, and uh, uh, our, our biggest target was the uh, glass insulators at uh, San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> I thought afterwards, after we'd grown up, and they were selling those for uh, 50 cents for a dollar, and I think, I think all those that we broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she should do that too. Or yeah. And we had snow every, every winter. We'd have snow, and uh, the river would freeze over, and we could skate on it. Uh, we worked, as I say, everything we could find to do to help. Uh, 
to help mom, uh, uh, they, they raised a lot of wheat and uh, oats and peas around there. And uh, I worked on a, my oldest brother and, and a fellow that owned a truck would haul the 100 pound sacks of grain into the, into the uh, warehouse. And I worked on the back of the, of the truck spotting the sacks and rows, you know. So, tell me, what uh, what were you doing on December 7th, 1941, if you can recall? Um, let's see, where was I? I th as I recall, I think I was downtown in, uh, in Eugene. Seems like I remember being in a in a, in a restaurant in the soda soda fountain. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, everybody got pretty excited. Were you in high school at this time? I graduated in '41. Oh, so you had? I was out of school. Yeah. What What were you What were you doing? Were you working? Well, or I was. Uh, uh, I did. I was working uh, while I was in high school uh, on the weekends and, and after school times I was working at an auto parts store delivering parts. And then uh, the war, war thing geared up. Uh, I went up to with uh, some of my buddies. We went up to Portland and uh, over to Vancouver, Washington. and. Uh, they were building housing for shipyard workers, and uh, all I was uh, doing for eight hours was running a cutoff saw, cutting two by fours to two eight foot deals, this one is, after another. Uh, where was this? At uh, Vancouver, Washington, oh. across the Columbia, across the river from Portland. Right. And then uh, we found out that. Uh, Kaiser was hiring uh, people in the shipyards in Portland, so we uh, went over and got a job working in the shipyards, and worked in that until uh, uh, I got my call to, uh, well, I'd, I'd, I'd gone up and, uh, and to enlist in the Navy, and uh, I, by just a fluke, I, I did, uh, as I say, I was so interested in aviation that I knew all about how you, how you got to be a pilot and uh, you had to uh, have two years of college and I didn't have that, I just graduated from high school. And uh, so finally uh, decided to go in the Navy and a buddy and I went up to go in the Navy and, and uh, just a fluke. I saw I saw a sign about so big on one of those Uncle Sam wants you deals out in front of the I guess it was a post office building or some uh, courthouse or something there. It said cadet exams, air 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 corps cadet exams, room so and so, and uh, I told Jimmy. Uh, uh, friend that I was with, uh, let's go see what that's about. He said, we don't have no college education. We can't get, we can't get in the air course. Well, let's go. It won't, don't cost nothing to look. So we went in and uh, they said, you're high school graduate? Yep. Go ahead, take the test. And I was a little flabbergasted, but I wasn't going to argue with him. So we went in and both of us passed a written test to give and then we Went in uh, to take the physical, and, and uh, I passed the physical, and uh, Jimmy uh, got uh, turned down because of a overlapping tooth. Well, I had lost uh, four teeth in the front from uh, uh, a five.
fight in, in um, football, and uh, so I had partial plate, and I had I had to uh, endure the last couple of years of high school with uh, nicknames like Granny and uh, Snaggletooth, and you know, out of a good high school, <laughs> kids like to pin those on you. And, Tell me how that. Oh, it's why you were playing football you lost him? I lost, I had, uh, first I had a partial with two teeth uh, yeah. that uh, uh, I was uh, uh, a little, uh, my mouth was bigger than, <laughs> than, than my muscles, I guess, I don't know how you'd put that, but anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I, I tangled with the wrong person, anyway, and uh, then How, old I, were then then? I, huh? How old were you then? Oh, I was probably 16. Yeah, about 16 when I lost the first two. And then uh, uh, I lost the two next to us. So Jimmy knew I had false. Uh, he says you got in with false okay, teeth. Okay, wait, wait, wait. The other one you lost playing in football. Yeah. Well, an elbow or something like that, or what? Uh, I don't know. If it was an elbow or knee. Uh, but I caught uh, in the mouth, and and uh, I remember my nose was bleeding. Uh, no, fa I was, no, I was face, going to, no face guards in those. No, no, <laughs> uh, no. And uh, all I know is that I was going through the middle of the line, and something hit me an awful wallop, and, uh, and uh, that's when I discovered I had something loose in my mouth. When I played football in high school. We didn't get. We, we got a, a single bar in my senior year, but before that, we didn't. That was the that was the thing that worried me the most of those losing people. I had a, a lot of the guys just like you. They go, you know, they get those. And my best buddy on kickoffs, we would go down in a certain position in yeah. from the outside, and he'd go down on one side, I'd go down on the other. And this this one game, he went down, and and, and it just. You know, if I'd have been in his position, the guy gave him an elbow right, and these oh. two were empty pounds. Oh. That's a, that was, to me, I think the hardest I was ever hit was, I weighed uh, 139 pounds was the most I ever weighed. <laughs> yeah, let me get this. Yeah. Uh, this is Turning a uh, kickoff in, uh, as usually, we were playing in the, in the mud, and uh, we played on one field that uh, you had to watch out for the cow flops because <laughs> this was nothing but a pasture, a cottage grove. Uh, anyway, I come up and uh, angled over to the to the sideline and just started to turn up on the sideline and. The guy that was on the kickoff team on that end was their fullback, and he weighed about 225 pounds, and he had up a full head of steam, boy, and he would come down there, and I wasn't smart enough in those days to step out of bounds, oh. and he hit me, <laughs> and two or three times, uh, uh, the ones in the stands thought I was, uh, I was, not, if not killed, I was in bad shape. <laughs> and anyway, I remember uh, laying on my back, and then he'd, uh, he'd come up and wham me, and I flew back and landed on my back. And I felt like I was uh, uh, numb, you know, and I, and I started, one of, the, one of the guys came over to grab me and pull me up. I just a minute. <laughs> I was moving my neck and I was moving my arm. Oh, everything working all right. <laughs> I never wanted to get hit that hard again. But your buddy had a one overlap tooth. Yeah, he had a tooth coming out over that and uh, they turned him down. And he's still to this day, if I see him, he'd, he'd bring that up. You got in with false teeth. And <laughs> turned down for one lousy tooth. Let me back up for a minute. You yeah. were telling me that you delivered parts for this auto parts, or did you have a car when you were yeah. doing that? Uh, when, no, uh, they had a, a, they a Model B Ford Model pickup. B Ford. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have that. Uh, uh, I thought many times afterward, I uh, wish I had that. That's uh, yeah. worth a lot of money. Uh -huh. Very pretty rare. And uh, 
and then uh, how you just we we picked beans or or worked in the cannery or uh, uh, one year I topped beets. I never want to do that again. You have to. You're down in the in the mud, actually in the mud, and you're pulling these beets and and twisting the tops off and sticking them in a sack and drag the sack and after you do several and then you'd have to drag the sack and, and when you get through why well, you had this nice stain on your uh, on your right hand you know you're stained up pretty good but this was really ground in good here it took quite a while to get all that, that beet stain out of my skin but uh, that's what the kids did in those days you didn't you uh, most of your uh, uh, junior high or high school kids uh, worked wherever they could work mm -hmm. because that was still uh, back to 38 and 39 you know 40. So you so you got uh, uh, they accepted you into the Air Corps as an Air Corps cadet then? Mm -hmm. but then they and then this was with the, oh, 1940 what year would that be then? That would have been uh, 40, late 42. Okay. Yeah, 42 to 45, I was in three years. And, uh, but before, before they took me in, I had to wait for the, the call for next class. Uh, and I was going to go to college training detachment at Tempe, Arizona and uh, get the equivalent of, of uh, two years of college in about five months. And, uh, but one Is of that the, like the University of Arizona? There? That's Arizona State now. Oh, Arizona State, yeah. It was Arizona State Teachers College when, we, when I was there. Uh -huh. And uh, before I went in though, uh, Whenever one of our, our uh, group of guys that went to school together and knew each from both our school and Eugene High School, but they go in, we'd have a party for them, going away party, and see them off. And I kept waiting and waiting for my orders to report, and the guys kept going and kept going. Finally, I'm the I'm the last of the Mohicans uh, waiting for uh, my orders and so when I got them went down to, the, to uh, leave and my mother and sister was down there in the, and uh, the train depot and all the girls from uh, all, all the parties the other guys uh, I think there was something like eight of them or so like there and, and one of them said, Wayne, are you going to kiss us goodbye? And I, I said, real nonchalant, I said, line up. <laughs> and those dirty cows, they took their lipsticks and they just loaded that, that lipstick. And I had lipstick <laughs> from ear to ear. <laughs> I got on the train and, and this, I remember this old, old fellow on the train said, you look like an Indian on the warpath. <laughs> I always say, nobody got a <laughs> uh, better send off than I got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you were, what did you say, five, five months at uh, Arizona yeah. State? And then, then and, what? And uh, that was very accelerated. I mean, I never studied so hard in my life because when I was what, in high what? school, I was a I was a jock and, and uh, chasing girls and uh, schooling was just kind of secondary. And I was just, boy, I wish I had <laughs> hit the books when I was in high school. Yeah. What kind of classic courses did you take? Did you well, uh, in mathematics they'd start out with arithmetic and algebra and, and, and calculus and, uh, and uh, trigonometry. and. Uh, I mean, was it, geared physics, toward, was it geared, geared towards? Well, this or was is, just, this, is a, this was. Uh, I don't know. I, the training command, uh, so many things that they, uh, you had to have. There's no application for them. No application.
application whatsoever. It's education, but not not to a purpose. And uh, well, we had uh, uh, like biology, and we had a world famous uh, professor there that uh, uh, one of his uh, thing was scorpions, and he'd have. Scorpion, live scorpions in there, in there, and, and uh, he used to tap, you know, on that old tail. <laughs> and uh, well, the best part of it, really, uh, and we were grounded. We couldn't; uh, they wouldn't let us go into Phoenix. Uh, we had to stay on the face. Uh, some of the guys had uh, girlfriends that were there. And uh, I think a couple of them were married, but we were in a, they had a uh, kind of a square unit on this side of the, of the uh, street was a, a big old rambling uh, uh, dorm type thing, and I mean a wooden job. Across the street there was a uh, U-shaped uh, women's dorm and uh, one, of, one of these was uh, uh, one wing was for the cadets and then they had that chained uh, door chained off so <laughs> these other two were the gals. We uh, got so tired of being cooped up so we, we uh, the gals that were coming to visit would uh, bring a shoe box or a, a small tote bag or something and they'd have a bottle or two in there and, uh, and, uh, and we would uh, could have some parties and we found out you could get up uh, through the roof, uh, through the uh, uh, stairway thing, emergency folding up the other, you could get through to the roof. The cows could get through to the roof, and there was nothing uh, in there in the way of barriers, so the, the parties went on the roof. <laughs> and uh, it was awful hot. We had a mutiny there, if you want to call it a mutiny. Uh, we were wearing uh, heavy khaki shirts, and it was uh, like it is now, uh, 100 and 100 plus. And uh, just uh, getting up in the morning formation, uh, you would be wet, uh, you know, uh, perspiring. And uh, so somebody, I don't remember just who it was now, said, uh, what if we all just uh, uh, broke out in t-shirts? Sound like a good idea. And uh, they kicked it around some more. They said, well, the only way we could do it is if every buzz, everybody does it and we uh, all stick together. And so uh, after we checked out everybody and everybody said they were all for it, yeah, they just going to stick to it. I said, all right. Next morning we broke out in t shirts. And we had a second lieutenant, fresh from West Point, <laughs> and he uh, was so straight up and down, and his shirt, the creases, you could cut yourself on the creases, everything spit and polish. And he informed the gentleman that is not the uh, 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 uniform of the day, back in the quarters and come out in your regular uniform. Nah, no way. Come back out in t-shirts. Then he start getting red in the face and he, he realized we could give you the 104th article of war and yeah, 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 and we just stayed there. Now, going to come out in the proper uniform. We went back out and came back in, came out in t-shirts. And then I guess he got to thinking he couldn't wash out the whole class. He'd have to explain to uh, <laughs> his superiors why this. And uh, 
So he just said, uh, could it happen? Marcy's is the class, you know, and turned around with a boy, his face was beat red. I know he, he wanted to keel haul a whole bunch of us, but uh, that was uh, that was our first uh, <laughs> mutiny. <laughs> I was I was a bit ornery in those days because I, if I didn't think something was right, I would uh, open my mouth, and sometimes it got me in trouble. But uh, but no repercussions other than nope, that. Nope, nothing whatsoever. So did you it's guys either stick together or we hang separately? <laughs> so were you able to wear T-shirts and that on? Yep. Like that? Yeah. Yep. So where did you go from there? Santa Ana, pre-flight. There, uh, they really poured it to you. Um, <laughs> first, the first day came in and there, you had a stack of uh, paper about this big uh, on your on your uh, chair with a you know, on it. And uh, all we did was turn the top one over. You have so many minutes to complete this. And yeah, okay. Next, and talk about tests. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever see that many tests in one place. And then we had, uh, we always had marching, march everywhere, uh, parades every Sunday. Uh, you get a pass on Saturday, go into uh, LA. Back, uh, had to stand that that uh, uh, parade every Sunday, and uh, all kinds of uh, physical tests, uh, depth perception tests, uh, uh, how steady you were. You'd have a little a ring, and you'd have a probe, and it was electric. If you touched the side, it would uh, sound a buzzer and you had to insert that into the young, uh, I don't know how many times. And we had some sports, uh, but classes, march to class. Um, and we looked out for each other, uh, helped uh, when somebody was having Most trouble. of the guys that were at uh, Arizona State, did they? Go with you to uh -huh. went with and made a free flight. And uh, in my case, uh, I had one class that I just couldn't get worth a darn. And you had to pass them all. And uh, it got down. We had three tests in that. Uh, and I had uh, flunked the first two tests, or my grade average was so low that I had to have a I had to have a hundred percent on the last test, and I was said, "There is no way I'm I'm washed out." And the guy said, "No, let's figure out something here." When you marched into class, why you you one row went in and, uh, and down, and then uh, another down, and then you all turned and you all sat down. Well, they figured out the uh, uh, seating so that I was sitting here and uh, the smartest guys were on each side of me and behind and in front of me. And uh, say so was cooperation means graduation. <laughs> so they were going to bail me out. So then one of the guys who uh, was pretty sharp uh, was very fast and he would go up and the teacher, uh, the instructor would uh, grade the, the test. So and then he'd come back and walk by my desk and if he and, and slow down and look if he saw something that was uh, was wrong why well, he'd put his finger on it and then walk on. And uh, and uh, the brain trust and I would get together and figure out the right answer. And uh, so after it was over and uh, he was grading tests away and then he uh, he says you know, boys, he said, uh, one, of our, one of our cadets had to have a perfect score in order to pass this course. And do you know he had a perfect score? 
he knew he knew what was going on. <laughs> he had a kind heart. I guess he decided not to wash me out. <laughs> oh dear. So the guys that were sitting around you, they did that on their own or did oh, they just, oh okay. Really? The instructor didn't wasn't didn't wasn't part of this. Oh no. Oh, oh, no, so, no. So your no buddies, we, the your brothers buddies figured this all out and uh, oh, that's okay. how we changed the Order in which we marked it. Well, we should have known uh, right off the bat that he'd recognize we weren't in the same order that we usually came in. Because yeah. you always marched uh, into class in the same formation, and you were in this row. Or in the, being the, being as short as I was, I was usually in the back end row. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but I, I was. I've told people before the thing that uh, kept, uh, I think, kept most of us going. They'd, they'd pound this into you all day, you know, until you're wondering, what am I, why don't I just drop out of this, you know? And who needs this uh, this much aggravation? And and uh, then around uh, uh, dinner time, the the uh, P-38s would come in over at. Uh, at uh, uh, Ontario, there was a squadron, I guess, over there, and they'd come in and flare up like this and stand them over and come around and land. We'd stand outside, you know, watching those P-38s come in every evening and <laughs> wipe the drool off of our chin and <laughs> get fired up and go hit it again the next day. <laughs> I often said I think that kept more uh, more cadets in pre-flight than anything else, any other one thing. Yeah. You're great for our morale. So then, where, where, then did you, where did you go from? They went to uh, Ontario, uh, to uh, Calero uh, was the name of the, of the field. Cal and it was a C A L A arrow, arrow, yeah, okay. arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, uh, teaching, uh, uh, flying Black school there, yeah, right. owned by a Colonel Mosley, and it was called the Country Club of the Training Command because it had, instead of the old uh, tar paper uh, barracks type things, you had these uh, little huts with uh, two, two nice beds in there and uh, your, own, uh, your own bathroom and everything. Pure luxury. <laughs> so, went through primary there and then uh, Went on to basic, and they changed the they changed the field from primary to basic while we were there. Mm -hmm. So I never left there for both primary and basic. Mm -hmm. Flew the Stearmans, and then flew the uh, Volte vibrators. Uh, uh, and uh, and then things got. Bad. I got. Uh, I had to go to Douglas, Arizona, for advanced twin engine. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, had uh, by this time had they decided whether it was going to be a fire or a single engine or a multi engine well, or what? Uh, if I if I had uh, only fighter that I could have flown going to a twin engine school would have been a uh, a. Uh, P38, yeah. but uh, you never knew what you were until, uh, well, you, you were pretty sure you weren't going to get fighters unless you, you happened to luck out and get 38s. So, so when that... Uh, well, okay, well, how did everybody go to twin engine school, or uh, how did you go to, I mean, are there different... Well, there, like there's different training fields all over, and... Uh, uh, The, the just flight like the, the luck of the draw. Yeah, so. just uh, just uh, I was recommended by my instructors in primary and basic uh, for uh, fighters, 
But then uh, the powers that be say, well, we can allow, let's say, uh, 10 can go to fighters, the remainder go to twin engine. Okay. So, uh, 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 Douglas, Arizona is probably one of the most <laughs> unpopular places in the world to, to uh, fly. Where is uh, it? Right on the Mexican border, right across from Agua Prieta. <laughs> anyway, the uh, uh, wind blew awful hard and a lot of sand. It's kind of like around here sometimes. So the, those conditions and hot and you were in the old you were in the old tar paper shacks barracks and uh, the uh, shower room the bathroom was uh, probably uh, 100 feet maybe from the back of the barracks and uh, so you'd have to run across here and then run back and and uh, I guess they said the gals that worked on the base got some interesting flashers going back and forth from there with the showers. And so you're right outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right out in uh, no uh, shelter. But uh, and uh, when I graduated, why the uh, um, orders were that you were either uh, B-17 or B-24 and there was one one fella got uh, P-38 photo recon at Washington to your control on your tail and uh, so that was the way you that's why you landed them and uh, they had a problem with uh, with the gear uh, freezing and not being able to get them down and it happened uh, to me and the uh, only other uh, stump that uh, I ran into in the service and he was, uh, his name was William Stump and he and I were uh, in training at the same, in the, in the same squadron and flew in the same uh, plane and uh, we couldn't get the gear down and we uh, we tried everything that they recommend. You couldn't put, you couldn't crank it down. It just was froze. A solenoid would freeze up, and uh, they said they wanted to see a uh, fly by the tower. And uh, of course, we were scared because well, uh, we don't got no wheels. <laughs> so I flew it right at the tower, and then I just racked it up like that, and it went by. And, I guess they figured I got too close because uh, the uh, guy on the radio sounded like Donald Duck. He was talking so fast. <laughs> I wanted them to get a good look. Mm -hmm. And then they said, just just uh, bring it in and uh, land it on the, on the runway. I thought, well, I'm going to come out and foam that runway and do all of this. And uh, I was afraid of fire. And uh, so we talked it over, and I told him, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not st staying with this sucker any longer, and I have to if we get it on the ground. And uh, they had pins on the, the doors on both sides, like a car door. And uh, you could pull the pins, and the, and the door would fall off. And uh, so brought it in and, and uh, shut off the switch. and, and uh, set it on its belly and uh, sure curled up the props and uh, we pulled the pins and the pins were back I don't know how far behind where the, where the plane ended up. I stepped off the wing on the on the runway and I was still going fast enough that I almost went head, <laughs> head over heels. <laughs> don't, don't want you to think we were scared or anything but we sure didn't want to get away from that plane. <laughs> That was about the most exciting thing that, that happened in the... Yeah. So you, so then you got assigned to B-17s, uh, mm -hmm. and where did you go for that? 
Hobbs, New Mexico for our transition in B-17s. And uh, I couldn't uh, see that I was ever going to be able to fly one of them. It, it, it was, to me, it was so big and there were so many instruments and there was, uh, I just didn't think I'd ever be able to. But then they, you go to school on it just like anything else and, <clears throat> and then you find out that uh, those instruments aren't that hard to uh, identify and then after you get to where you can reach out and blindfold and put your finger on the stuff while you, they don't bother you anymore and then you find out that it's uh, not that hard to fly. It's a heavy airplane to fly. You've got to, of course, we were, we were young and in good shape so we could wrestle it. Did you ever hear Gene talk about the first time he flew in this B-17? <laughs> you know, he flies an awful lot and he, could, he couldn't believe how much it took to, to, to horse that 17 around. Yeah. And I, I said, yeah, Gene, you ought to try it with a 6,000 pounds of bombs and a full load of gas. <laughs> you think this is heavy? <laughs> but um, transition uh, was all right, except, like I said, to, uh, they didn't teach us some of the things they, that we should have concentrated on, like uh, high altitude work and and uh, and uh, formation flying. Yeah. Oh, we had some crazy instructors. Uh, there's two of us and, a, and an instructor. Uh, one night we're up flying. We went over some town. I don't even remember the name of the town now. We were up about ten to fifteen thousand, I think. And he looks down there, and I'm sitting in a what we call a swing seat, was just a uh, a little seat you could hang between the the seats. And the uh, the other um, pilot was up in the right hand seat, and he cranked that over and sat straight down at this uh, town, center of this town. And I remember looking down there and we're going down and here's a theater marquee. And he goes down and in and then he pulls it back and runs the props through and, and uh, I guess the next day there was a piece in the paper about an aircraft out of control <laughs> over this town. Well, you say run the cops through, what do you mean? Oh, you. And then I'm still trying to think of the name of Tampa. Oh. Okay. Just outside of Tampa. St. Not St. Pete. Huh? St. Pete. St. Pete. Tampa, St. Pete's pretty innocent. Yeah, about, about the same. Right. That's your. Well, you, you,